Hi there, Dr. Gary here on the road. We sell dental practices nationwide and we have new breaking information for you. Today's topic is seller makes risky financial decision upon the sale of a dental practice. We'll get into what happened <clears throat> under those circumstances. <clears throat> Before we do so, as you know, we now have 10 employees and we are selling practices in over 20 states across the country. We have 402 YouTube videos on buying and selling dental practices. Make sure you go see that. And we're available to you every day except Christmas and Easter from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. East Coast time. So call us, even if you just want to chat. But we can help you get your dental practice sold or buy a dental practice. We've been doing this for 13 years now. I was a dentist for 25. Our phone number is 201-663-0935. And our website is dentalpracticeguide.com or nationwidedentalpracticebrokers.com. So call us. Be happy to chat with you and tell you what's going on with everything. Now, if you're thinking about selling to a DSO, definitely give us a ring because we work very closely with them. They often will pay our commission. So generally there's no commission to the seller in a DSO sale. We know what's going on. We're working with them on an ongoing basis. And we understand and know the marketplace. We understand who's taking a long time to go to closing, who's taking a, uh, who's having some financial troubles, who's consolidating. Uh, we hear a lot of information. Some uh, big, big dental offices, big, big DSOs are no longer buying single practices. So they're only buying a platform, six, seven, eight practices. So that's changed. Some are not buying in New York City anymore. That's changed. Some have increased the base, uh, what they want for the gross collections minimum, and their EBITDA has changed. So we're aware of all this. Call us. We can talk to you about this. Now, also, when you work with us and it's a DSO sale, we'll get your legal fees reimbursed upon successful closing. Okay? And that should work out very well for you. We've done that multiple, multiple times. So today's topic is seller of a dental office makes a risky financial decision. I don't know why he did this, but it was only a small practice grossing less than 500. Now, you got to realize that dentists are getting 100% of the loan. If the loan is, you know, within normal range, uh, the financing for that is generally 100% with no money down. The reason for that is the default rate is so low. It's like 0.25%. Nobody fails. Uh, so there was no reason for this dentist to hold about 40% of the note. The doctor could have gotten all the money from the, uh, uh, the bank. But then the other part was the bank rates are now at 7%. So compared to it used to be at 3%. So the buyer didn't want to spend that much on uh, interest. So that's what happened. Now, they had some communication directly with the seller, and I wasn't privy to it. I wish I was. You should always go through everything with the broker. But this is a special circumstance. Also, the seller was not using a dental attorney. Not the best advice. But this was a deal under 500. I guess he figured he knew everything. I don't suggest ever working without an attorney ever. Under no, no circumstances should that ever occur. So the seller and the buyer kind of bypassed me, even though I got my full commission and had this private conversation. One thing led to another. The seller is carrying 40% of the sale. In other words, he's taking a loan back. Now, that is a little bit risky. Although the default rate of a dental loan is at 0.25%, it's risky. A little bit. 
because the seller can get the buyer can get 100% financing. There's no reason to do that. Now, under certain circumstances, yes, the seller will hold a little paper. Often that happens on the real estate where the buyer doesn't have enough money for the down payment, and the seller will take back maybe five, 10% of the mortgage note or hold a secondary mortgage uh, on the uh, real estate. Sometimes it's done. They'll get 100% fund. They'll get 100% on the dental practice, and the banks usually learn 80 to 85% or higher on the real estate. But if the buyer doesn't have the 20% for the real estate, sometimes the seller will take that as a second note. That is, is in second position. Banks in first position. But whatever. Uh, sometimes that is done. Yes. But this circumstance is a deal under 500,000. I didn't see a reason for the seller to hold the mortgage. I didn't advise it, but they did it anyway. So I consider that a bit of a riskier um, choice for the seller because what are you going to, uh, you know, what is your recourse? You have no physical assets, really. I mean, I guess you could try to take the practice back, but what if the practice is driven down to the ground or something crazy happens, uh, you know? It's not like an automobile. You can repossess an automobile or a house. You can repossess a house. But a dental practice is also a business and a physical plan. So I think that's something that he should have been more or she should have been more careful with. I don't suggest sellers holding mortgages. Certain circumstances with real estate, yes. But in this, I don't consider it. But he liked her. She liked him. It's working out. So let's see what happens. We'll have more information, more uh, more stories for you. It changes every day. Every day, there's something new. And we're happy to uh, share all this with you. All right? Now, we're at 104 or 5 YouTube videos. I think, believe that's more than anybody in the country. But whatever. If you want to get the updated information, this is breaking news. This just happened. This didn't happen six years ago. It's happening now. So... We give you the breaking news as it's breaking right now, and we try to give you up-to-date information. So hit the subscribe button so you get all of this updated information. All right? Just got back from Florida. I'm excited. We're going to open up that territory soon. And then uh, leaving for Australia on January 9th, we're doing that cruise. It's very little time if you want to go with that. That's only in a couple days, but you can still get in. Uh, if you wanted to go, it's going to be great going up and down the uh, coast of Australia on a beautiful cruise ship, uh, Sovereign of the Sea, I think it is. Oh, I'm so excited. Put on a few pounds, I guess, but what are you going to do? Um, it, it's going to be fantastic. I'm really excited. And then doing, uh, giving the cruise seminar, which we're excited about. And uh, then we're going to do some snorkeling in the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, unbelievable. Really excited. And we're going to do this again, I think, in January of 25. So stay in touch with us. We'll be putting a cruise on then. I think we're going to do Caribbean next. Get ready. Bye now.